Hi and welcome back to another YouTube video. Here's the second and final part of my Reina Targaryen series and I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to do the usual race of liking, subscribing and putting on post notifications if you want to be notified when I post. And I also usually post updates on my Tumblr and Instagram which will be linked in the description below. And stay tuned for the important question at the end of this video and I won't keep you any longer and let's get into this. The regents were irked. Well, irked, that's a mild word. They were pissed and frightened that she'd give birth to an heir for Aegon III. The child of a wanton and a bastard wasn't really what they wanted on their plate. So they made arrangements for Reyna to wed quickly. They asked if she had a favorite amongst her suitors and the woman replied coyly that she was fond of Sir Corin Corbray, whom she'd befriended in the Vale. And here it comes with like, Reyna was you know, the more docile of the two, and she, but she had a bit of a cunning streak to her, you know, she was Prince Damon's daughter, she told them, oh, I'll marry whomever my lords desire, but I am fond of Sir Corwin Corbray, so that was a bit, you know, a manipulative tactic. So Sir Corwin and Reyna wed, and she grew pregnant quickly. Sir Corwin was not the ideal match for a Targaryen princess, he was a second son, he'd been married before and had two daughters, but I guess it didn't really matter. However, she miscarried in the second half of 133 AC. Jahira Targaryen, Reyna's paternal cousin, the last of their paternal cousins, died that same year and a new queen was to be found for her brother. And thus the Maiden's Day cattle show began being set in motion and here to the right we have more beautiful art by Rio at the right and it depicts a Baratheon and a Lysini who came to, you know, the ball. It was Reyna and Bela who introduced their kinswoman, Daenerya Valerion, to the king, last of all women. They made quite a dramatic entrance. Daenerya was only a girl of six, but all agreed that she was a surpassingly beautiful child. She was the orphan daughter of Lady Hazel Hart and uh, Daron Valerion. And so it was that the king chose the young girl and they wed on the last day of 133 AC. This action proved to make the regents cool toward Reyna because they thought that they had, you know, Reyna in their, in their court. And uh, when it turned out that she went and did this, she went behind their backs because the hand, he wanted, you know, his own daughter to marry Aegon III, Muriel Peak. So when Reyna did this, it made them all cool toward her because she was the more docile of the two. She would do what they wanted, but then she rebelled like this and they didn't like it because they thought Bela wild and willful. But what, you know, when Reyna goes and does this, who do they really have in their court? No one. A year later, she was made aware that Prince Viserys, her half-brother by Daemon and Rhaenyra, was alive. And Reyna decided to be part of the court's welcoming party for the lost prince. However, with joy came tragedy. Reyna would ride mourning her dragon for the first time in 135 AC, but she was also subject to the loss of her husband when he was killed in the Vale. And I actually think that she loved him or was dearly fond of him because of what comes next. Her sister, Bela, had to travel to Dragonstone to comfort her sister, but also make sure that Reyna didn't take mourning to avenge that fallen husband of hers. So that insinuates that Reyna was in quite a lot of pain after she found out about the death of Sir Corwin. But, you know, I don't think that Reyna would just go and bring fire and blood to the people who were responsible for the killing of her husband because it wasn't really her way. I don't think she would have done that with her dragon. This isn't season eight of Game of Thrones where they just make you go mad and burn an entire city down. But let's not, let's not go into that. And in 136 AC, King Aegon turned 16, so he was allowed to rule without his regents and plans for a royal progress were made. Reyna wished to join this progress atop her dragon mourning, but the hand of the king delicately forbade it. And after the loss of her first husband, she would come to have another. 
Reina wed Garmund Hightower, and that marriage brought forth six daughters, and though we don't know their name or in what manner they lived. Can I just add in here that I find it a bit strange that she wed a Hightower considering her father's known hatred for them, and that the Hightowers were responsible to the core for the death of most of her family, and the war. So I don't really know how she felt about that. I, I can't imagine she would have felt pleasant about marrying a Hightower and having his children and all of that. I actually did check up Garment Hightower on the A World of Ice and Fire wiki and I can't really remember. And he was kind of closely related to Queen Alicent, so I can't imagine that would have made it any better. Much like her sister, the rest of Reyna's life remains unclear. We don't know what happened to Morning because from what we see at the end of Fire and Blood, Morning seems like a healthy dragon and uh, I really just, I will be pissed. I will be pissed if they decide to kill Morning in some horrible way. I will actually, I will riot. Well, here we have some quotes about or regarding Reyna Targaryen for your viewing pleasure because we like having quotes here because it kind of gives you an idea of who they were as a person, so let's begin. In truth, there were only two claimants the realm was like to accept. The king's half-sisters, Bela and Reyna Targaryen, Prince Daemon's twin daughters by his first wife, Lady Lena Valerion. The girls were now 16 years of age, tall and slim and silver-haired, very much the darlings of the city. Bela is too wild, countered Sir Torn Manderly. How can she rule the realm when she cannot rule herself? Sir Willisfell agreed. It must be Reyna. She has a dragon. Her sister does not. When Lord Corbray answered, Bela flew a dragon. Reyna only has the hatchling. Lady Reyna proved to be as tractable as her sister had been willful. She would of course wed whomever the king and council wished, she allowed though. It would please me if he was not so old as he could not give me children, nor so fat that he would crush me when we are abed. So long as he is kind and gentle and noble, I know that I shall love him. When the hand asked if she had any favorites amongst the lord and knights who had paid her suit, she confessed that she was especially fond of Sir Corwin Corbray. And another one. If either of the twins produced a son, to be sure, the boy would at once be first in the order of succession. But Lady Reyna's pregnancy had ended in miscarriage, which left only the child growing inside Lady Bela on Driftmark. The thought that the crown might pass to the whelp of a wanton and a bastard was more than Lord Unwin Peak was prepared to stomach. Lady Reyna's desire to accompany the progress on her dragon was delicately deflected whilst her sister Bela declared that she would come along whether she was wanted or not. The doors to the throne room were thrown open and the daughters of Prince Damon entered upon a blast of winter air. Lady Bela was great with child, Lady Reyna wan and thin from her miscarriage, yet seldom had they seemed more as one. Both were dressed in gowns of soft black velvet with rubies at their throats, and the three-headed dragon of House Targaryen on their cloaks. Brother, Lady Reyna said to Aegon, if it please you, we have brought your new queen. Lady Reyna, at the age of 19, was flying her dragon mourning for the first time. That first day she circled once around the city before returning to the dragon pit, but every day thereafter she grew bolder and flew further. And that's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to leave a like if you did, as well as subscribe and put on post notifications so you never miss a video. And let me just ramble here quickly. Firstly, I want to apologize for this video being three months late when I said that I was going to be more active. And the truth is that I'm just struggling a bit mentally right now and it's hard to find the motivation to do certain things. And we've started senior year, which keeps me kind of busy. But I am dedicated to keep this channel going, so don't leave me quite yet. And the next video will actually be a little different, most likely. I have an interesting concept, which I'd like to put into play However, my mic is still a bit messed up and I haven't gotten a new phone yet because I'm waiting for the newer iPhones to drop. So I don't know if you'd rather I post these videos with that weird static clicking noise in the background, which I can never trace the origins of. Or just wait two or three months until I get my new phone. And I don't really know, it's kind of a taste thing if you guys can persevere because personally I listen to this clicking noise and it feels like I'm going mad. 
and it's just very annoying i i really think to have that in a video but it's really up to you guys so please comment your thoughts down below and i'll see you next time i just want to quickly also say thank you for the continuous support you guys are showing me when i go in here sometimes i do see your comments and it's just really heartwarming and motivating actually to have that there so i'm just really grateful for all your support and i think we're at like 270 subscribers right now which might not seem like a lot but it's um it's 270 people who are willing to listen to my crazed ramblings about targaryen so you know i mean that in itself is pretty great and you guys are always so kind so thank you and i hope you stay safe especially if you're in the united states wear a mask keep your distance and uh I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a nice day. Bye.